Kansas City. We're we'll drive this shit right here back and forth to the goddamn stadium. He had some rims on that bit, bro. Real right here. Real Yo. So when Tyreek Hill was playing for Kansas City, this would be the car he drive to the stadium. He grew up in a, in a, in a, in a town called Pearson. The population is 1,800 right now today. Back when he was growing up, it was like 12, honey. It's still the same house, man. Yeah. Oh, right now. Gilly. 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 I'm used to enough. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that who had the mighty full ties and training him right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, when, I, when he was coming up by him, once you get in the field grade, you don't fight with the guy your same age. Yeah. You fight with the guy my age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to go out there and take some ass whooping the guy out there and get better. Absolutely. That's how you got that dog in You got to be dogged out. You got to be dogged out. Absolutely. Right. You gotta get better. You gotta get better, bro. You gotta get better. So I gotta figure out how to stop this joke and slap my face. Yeah. I'm just using that for instance. I ain't finna slap yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're <laughs> saying. I ain't no violent no bird. Hell, I can't fight. Not no way. Yo, yo, he ready to get stuck, boy. He'll be done Fight out here. Y'all seen him play basketball right now, bro. Yeah, he be stuck out here. Hell, he ever burned. He'll be lost, boy. Hell, he ever burned. He don't even want to get dirty. Fuck it out. The, the hey, kids laughing at me. Fuck it out. My kids, my kids know how to ride. I'm teaching their little ass how to ride. They got their own bikes. They can oh. ride better than him. Oh, yeah, for sure. All my kids know how to ride now, especially my oldest. Who is that riding by right now? I could imagine he was out here training. With my granddad on my ass, bro. I didn't want to fight him. He wasn't playing. No, he wasn't I playing. Know. You how he screaming to that? Put it in reverse. <laughs> and he sit in that chair just like this, man. Just watch me run all the way to up and down the road. Just like this. Do it again. Keep running. Keep running. Non stop, bitch. Don't stop. And you see, we barely get traffic out here, so I'm, I'm training on the road too, though. A day, mm -hmm. hotter than ever. Hotter than ever. Pulling tires on that bit and everything. Bro, is it ever unbelievable to you? What's up? That you the you the you the baddest on the planet? Nah, bro. Like I said, bro. Like I never really had a moment to just like sit back and just like you know what I'm saying. Um, just embrace like who I've become. And I, and I need that. I need to do that sometimes. You feel me? I'm going on year nine in this shit, man. I just need to sit back and just got there. You be like, man, look where I came from. Bro, man. you came from a place that got 1,800 people here, bro. <laughs> Probably less than that, though. He said, damn. He said, my graduating class had 1,800 people. My high school, my high school. Seriously? Yeah. Bro, we had 12 people graduate as seniors this year. This episode of Me and I Was Worth the Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, um, life ain't going your way. You know what to do. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Uh, you caught your wife cheating today. You know what to do. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. You thought a check was coming and it didn't come your way. You know what to do. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. It's filtered five times. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. You can drink it straight up on the rocks, juice, soda, or you can make a classic New Amsterdam mule. That's up to you. Shout out to my wife, though, the New Amsterdam queen. Be at the crib, cocktailing it up. A whip, whip, a whop, 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 with the girlfriends. 
getting nice and done up. You know what I mean? But when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you get some New Amsterdam vodka. This is the official vodka of Barstool Sports. And uh, it's great for pre-gaming, you know, playoff time. New Amsterdam vodka. Let's go. That's crazy, man. 1,800 people. What? What? You know what the chances of you being successful? What it is? That shit was like 0.0 negative 0.1%. Damn! Think about it. How, out of the history of people that came from Pearson, right? Uh-huh. How many people really made it to be like successful like you? Like None. I would say none, bro. It's hard, man. It's, it's definitely hard, man. There ain't no outlets out ain't here, no man. outlets. Ain't no resources to like, you know, help you get, guide you and stuff like that. Ain't no, ain't no real like real mentors out here. Bro, we drove through the whole town in two, one, a minute and 45 seconds, man. Small, bro. He was like, all right, that was Pierce. And I'm like, what? That's it, bro. That's it. Everybody know each other. It's one of them times. Yeah. When you was on your journey here, you drafted in the fifth round. The disrespect. Uh-huh. Do you, that, do that hold, you got a chip on your shoulder about that shit? Because you got to understand, every time you go to a game, you looking at a wide receiver that got drafted in front of you. Right. And you better than him. You, so is it like you hold that chip on your shoulder? Nah, man, look, hey, I'm, I'm raised in this small ass town, bro. Me being drafted, I was already grateful. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. And my grandparents, they added that dog in me. So I already had that mindset, you know what I'm saying? Whether I was drafted first round, second round, or third round pick. Like I told my grandma, as soon as high school was over, I said, when I come back here, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to be the highest paid p p a receiver in the league, and I'm going to be one of the best players in the league. I told her that, you know what I'm saying, before I went to JUCO. Mm. And she was like, okay, as long as you keep God close to you. And that's one thing I always do, man. I, I always try to make sure that my faith is strong, no matter what situation I'm in, man. Like, if I'm going through something, I got to make sure that my faith is there, no matter what. I right. can't leave that lacking. If I'm doing good, I, 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 guess I really got to hold my faith close. You feel me? Because God taking care of me, dog. So... I'm blessed to be able to have this platform, man, share these resources, be a mentor to these kids. What's up? You ready? He, he ready to get busy. He ready to get busy. That's what he came down here for. He said, Dad, look, bro. I'm riding around them bikes, bro. <laughs> you ain't get no fish today? Nah, bro. I'm going to go in the morning, though. I'm going to go about uh, 7 a.m. with my uncle in Douglas, though. All right. See, I went to my uh, grandma's house. Yeah. She, had, she got like, like a little pond. She told me she got like some fish in there and a gator. I, I really want to see if we can catch the gator today. Yeah. Catch the gator? How you going to do that? I use my neck and then use my bare hand and like tape it, tape his mouth. Uh, Is you going to eat it or are you going to? I mean, I was going to take it to somebody to clean it and eat it, not me personally. But I know people around here that 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 are cooked that motherfucker. So when you go when you go when you get the fish, y'all actually cook the fish. Yeah. Out? So the fish, I, I I clean and I cut them, I fillet them, and then I cook them myself. You know that's a real loud country. I be doing that shit in Miami all the time, bro. How far is the gator from here? What you mean? Where the gator at? Oh, it's at my grandma's house. Literally like two minutes down the road. Well, you want to try to go get that? I ain't see it, bro. Oh, you ain't see if it. If I would have seen it, I would have still been out there trying to wrestle with that motherfucker. I would have liked to see that. That'd have been real. That'd have been real interesting, you trying to get a gator. Yeah, I, I left my kids in the house, though. They be want to be see stuff like that, but... But um, you know, you know, gators eat cheetahs. I'm too much, bro. I'm too much. I'm going to tell you right now. Like I said, the same thing I did, it's all about illusion, man. You feel me? Now, I, I, you know... Dad? What's up? I love ice. Yeah, go ahead. Go sit on it. You top-notch right now. You, you know... You world class athlete. First, first ballot Hall of Famer. First ballot Hall of Famer. I need one more Super Bowl, I think, man. All right, but listen, I got something. To be a first ballot Hall of Famer? I think so. No, never. No, you that guy. Let me you ask you a question. You need no Super Bowls for that. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. You in your prime, and prime time in this prime. Is you is you putting hundred yards on Dion? I'm putting I'm I'm putting one seventy five on Dion. Easy. Oh, oh, oh. One seventy five two oh, oh. Oh, the, oh, 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 bro. Curly, curly top prime, Let me though. see if I can get him on the phone. Hey, prime, prime was a GOAT, though. But you got to understand, though, they, they played a lot of man-to-man -man back in the day. Yeah. You feel me? And, like, I feel like generations has changed and receivers has changed. And we got so much stuff. And, I've, and our generation know so many, like, crazy movements. And we, we know all this crazy stuff. You know stuff, prime man. used to shut a whole half of a field down. Yeah, he used to. Down. But he was going against, like, who? 
Jerry Rice. <laughs> Jerry Rice, like, how tall, though? 6'2". <laughs> and I'm what? 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine, 197. I'm quicker, more agile. I can move a whole lot quick t twitch guy. I can catch screen. So it, it's a whole lot that go into a game. So I'm not saying I'm going to put the whole 197 up by going deep or running the actual route, right. catching screens. I'm doing whatever, you know what I'm saying, the game need me to do to right. get yardage on the uh, he said 175. On prime. Two, two tubs, too. Don't forget about that. Oh, and it's two tubs Easy. on prime. Easy. 175, two Easy. tubs in four. You hear this? Get what? A, a pop pop, you hear this? Get what? I'm so disrespectful with it. While I'm scoring, I'm doing it. I'm doing his shit in the end zone. Like, on prime? I'm doing his shit in the end zone with it. Then I'm going to point to him like that and say, You like that, don't you? You like that. <laughs> Let me just give a shout out to the big dog. He was the one that put the plan down. Had he running up and down the road, he crying. I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do this. Was he He's crying? Was, 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 was. Okay. Couple times. He goes right out. You broke him down. Tyler, what? Yeah. Tyler, what? But I gotta give him credit. He wasn't want to go in there every day with the gang about yeah. He get out there and work out. He worked. He worked every day. He wanted it. He wanted it. He believed. He believed. And I ain't gotta tell you what else this is. Y'all see? Baddest. On the planet, it's a hey, it. it's a real thing in our country strength too. Though they had me toting stumps and stuff, so we ain't have weights and shit. Yeah. We toting stumps for weights and shit. bricks, cedar bricks. Bro, I used to work at a pole plant. I don't be out there right out there pulling poles that big off the line. Yeah. See, you can't pull that. You can't gain no muscle. Well, I ain't got no now. <laughs> he's like, he wanna lift his shirt up like it. He's a boy, I ain't got nothing now. I had him, yeah. but then I wasn't doing nothing with driving Paul Little Nose. You can't gain no muscle pulling nothing off the line like this. Yeah. That's something for them little boys. Yeah. That's big. Big. Yeah. You need something big. Yeah. Bill and Cal. Where you get the speed from, though? I ain't got them either. I used to have them. Where you get the speed from? Speed. You know how it is. You know how it is. And my, my fastest, I ran the 40, 40 was 443. I wasn't nothing like fast as him, but back then when I played, yeah. I was doing them guys like that. He was doing them like Yeah, four, four, three is fast. I played though. three positions. I played cornerback, I played linebacker, and I played running back. Mm. I wanted to play defense. If you had to put him at a, one more position, what position would he excel at? I wanted to be play uh, linebacker. Outside. See, I played linebacker in high school. A lot of people don't know that, though. Yeah. I used to hit shit, boy. Yeah. I used yeah. to hit yeah. shit, like for real. They were playing Lions County one time over there in Culver County. They had him a defensive end. Boy, every time they had the ball, he would bite the only quarterback. Get. Boy, on the end, got shot. Every time he go down and try to get out and trip him when he go by. <laughs> it was all red over with by yeah. the time he reached like that. He was out of there. He so was gone. They put you in a defensive end? Water. Yeah, man, I played de defensive end against, I, I believe it was, it was like, um, this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Zero Sugar. The brand new Zero Sugar sports drink from our friend at Body Armor provides real hydration with no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Whether you're looking to stay hydrated or recovering from a long weekend, Body Armor Zero Sugar has got you covered with great tasting flavors like Fruit Punch and Lemon Lime. They're a huge partner with Barstool. We love Body Armor Zero over here at Barstool. Million dollars worth of game. Look at it. Different flavors. Fruit punch it. Get you hydrated. Make sure you get you some. Body Armor Zero Sugar is available in stores nationwide. Head over to Walmart and get yours today. Or stores nationwide. So that means this right here is everywhere like broken glass. You can get it anywhere, anywhere you can go. You can get body armor, body armor, body armor, zero sugar, body armor, zero sugar, body armor, zero sugar. So head over to Walmart ASAP and get yours. Right. I only did that one game. It was against like the number one offensive tackle in Georgia at the time. And our coach, he was like, Reek, I do not like this dude. He sucked and I want you to fucking embarrass him. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't playing in Pearson this small town. I was playing in Douglas. So we was like 6A. So it was a bigger town. So the competition is better. So I played defensive end that game. I had like four sacks against the number one tackle. They were like, bro, you play DN? I'm like, bro, I'm just faster than him, bro. Like, cause if, obviously if he get hands on me, it's over. Yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. When did you know you was great? Like, when did you, when did it become a reality? Like, yo, I could really take this 
and make some money off of this? Bro, like, so my senior year of high school, I ran for the Junior Olympics. You feel me? I had no scholarship offers or nothing for, for football. You know, but I always played football. I was real good at football, you know what I'm saying? But this small ass town is hard to get noticed. It's hard to get recognized. That's, that's the problem. You feel me? But I ran track. And like I told you, I was like, I was the fastest kid in the nation. I had ran like a 10 one nine, and everybody Dang. was like, who the f is this kid from South Georgia that ran a 10 one nine? And I started getting all these eyes on me. And all these recruiters started hitting me up out of nowhere saying, hey man, we would like for you to run track for our program. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can play football if you want to, but we want you to come play track. And at that moment right there, I knew I was like, bro, like if I can run track, cause I ain't even practiced track in high school for real, bro. I just went out there. And just took did the clothes your thing. off and did my thing, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my coach, Coach Hill, man. Not him. Not my dad, though, but Coach Hill. He was a legendary coach for me. But, yeah, man, and that moment right there, from running track, running the 10-1-9, from being a senior in high school, traveling all the way to Barcelona, Spain, competing for the country as a senior in high school, I, I knew I had it then, bro. But not, but, but you was doing all that in track. I was doing all that in track, not football. But you knew you had it in football. I knew I had it in football, bro. Cause like I was the best dude in my region. I was I really the best dude in the state, bro. I was killing. Yeah. But it was like, how do I get eyes on me? And every time, like, so our quarterback was six six, was going to Louisville. Yeah. Mm. But the Louisville people that they'll come and see me, they'll be like, Nah, bro, you too little, bro. Too small. You too little, bro. You ain't you ain't got it, bro. You can't play receiver. You can't play running back, bro. We don't need you, bro. You feel me? So I was like, Y'all got me, f up, bro. Like. I'm making this dude look good, bro. Right. He just throwing the ball deep to me. Right, like, right. You feel me? Man, I went, I, I took a chance. I went to Juco. I said, man, I ain't going D1, man. I ain't want to go to them. I ain't want to run track. I want to go to Juco. So that's how I ended up at Juco. And what Juco you went to? I went to Garden City Community College in Kansas. Ain't nothing out there. It looked just like this. Is that how Kansas City found out about you? Yeah, I believe so. I really believe so. You feel me? You think that was the best decision you made? Yeah, man, out, out, to of, the Juco. Out, out of my whole entire life, I would say that would probably be the best decision I ever made, man. Like, I stuck to my gut and I stuck to my intuition and my faith, man. Because obviously I could have went and ran track. I could have did some great things on the track and field. But my, my heart and my background and what my family taught me is football. I've always played football. I ain't started running track till like 11, 12th grade year, man. Yeah. And I was just good at track. Yeah, you was just fast. Naturally. Was just fast. Just naturally fast. I'm, just, I'm about to run like a straight hood, baby. Just. Yeah, yeah. He has no form, but he runs a 10-1. How does he do that? Like, yeah. How does he do that? There's right. kids out there practicing their whole life for this shit. Right, they, they got the perfect they got form. The perfect form. They like this. Oh, after you come up out the block, the three steps, you get straight. That, it, you, they, they, used to run they, track they doing all that. His did oh. like this. I'm talking about right for the race. They like, where's lane number four? I just walk up out of nowhere and just take my shorts off and run a 10-1. They're like, yep, that's the kid from Georgia. Yeah. Was it ever a time? You know, with the ups and downs that goes on in the league, that you, that you felt yourself breaking down, and you was like, you wasn't sure of yourself. Was it ever a moment? Nah, man. Like my grandparents always told me to be appreciative and grateful for everything that you in, man. And um, adversity, it's gonna come in life, man. And it's all about how you deal with it. You feel me? Um, the adversity I went through, whether it's off the field or on the field in the locker room, like I've learned from that. Like if it's on the field. I try to do my best to learn from the older guys in the locker room, ask them questions and say, hey man, how do you think I can get better from this? And some older guys, that they'll, they'll help you out. Some some guys are like, nah, gang, like you just here to try to take my spot. I'm not trying to help you out, man, because you could be replacing me next year. You, you know what I'm saying? But adversity, I feel like it, it comes and goes, man. It's all about how you deal with it. And then you got to have a strong mental to be able to deal with all that too, though. If, if, if you're not strong enough mentally, to be able to, to deal with the ups and downs of the league, it'll break you. It'll break you, man, from the fans, from um, from the meeting room with the coaches calling you out in front of other guys. Because a lot of guys aren't used to that. A lot of guys aren't used to sitting inside of a meeting room, being the best player on their team their whole entire life, and then a coach saying, bro, you f suck this f play, you ever bro. Had, you ever had somebody say that to you? Oh, yeah, this year, Miami Dolphins. You what know what happened? I'm saying? Like uh, the player against Snead, the player, the, uh, the Chiefs. Everybody see this yeah. player against the Chiefs when yeah. one came into the flow. He called me out. He like, Reek, bro, you supposed to be the best player in the league, and you got this guy putting hands all over you like that. This man, we pay you all this money for what? And for me, I, I love shit like that because I'm gonna take that to heart, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna get better from it. That'll never happen again to me in my life, man. You feel me? If a mother cannot hold me accountable, I feel like I'm not. 
I'm not going to be able to get better. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, the coaches can bypass that, you know what I'm saying, and just be like, ah, he'll get better from it. But if he's not saying nothing, like, the other guys, the other guys in the locker room, they're going to look at it as, oh, if Reek can do it, I can do it. And that's not getting the team better. I need the whole, I need everybody to get better, bro. You know what I'm saying? Baby brother Waddle, I, I got him up under my wing trying to teach him. I'm like, bro. He a dog. I want everybody to get paid, bro. He a dog, Everybody too. deserve it, bro. You feel me? Whatever wide receivers you look at, you you know, you might have an off week, a bye week, or you or you playing, and you look at checking out Sports Center, and you like, that boy a dog. That boy Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, Justin Jefferson for sure. Justin Jefferson Ooh. is a dog. He a different breed, bro. Yeah. And I'm I'm happy for him for like setting the setting the market for the receivers. It's crazy, gonna be crazy. But those three, uh, let me see. What about AJ Brown? I like AJ too, though. AJ big, physical. He can he can do it all. He can block. Can catch real good. Has long speed. Um, he's one of those guys. Me and, me, me, me and my dad would say, he has everything you need when you go up to McDonald's on a dollar menu. You feel me? I feel like every receiver has to have a, a menu of different things. Right. And A.J. Brown, he one of those guys that has it all. Got on, the size, the, the height. The size. He got everything. He can block, size, height, can catch, can catch screens. Whatever you need him to do, he can do it. You feel me? He got that. So he we definitely one of those guys that, that can do it all, man. Okay. The flip side now. What what cornerbacks is you like? Oh, I'm playing him today. It's on. It's up. What you mean? Like when you say up, I'm going to go say, for 200. You say, he's done. He's done today. He's getting barbecue. Uh, what I'm saying is, you you know like y'all watched that game against the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Kansas City Chiefs, when I put up like 250 in the first. Yeah, field? I was going to. You knew that. I, I knew was, that. I knew that all game. I mean, cause like you kind of know like when you watch film and you watch like certain DBs and certain tendencies that they have, you be like, okay, this team run a lot of man with no safety help. So their defensive coordinators trust they trust their DBs. And the DB is like, really, really either he's stiff or he, he doesn't do a great job getting his hands on. And it's like, bro, oh, it's, it's barbecue chicken. Man. It's all, it's, it's up. Barbecue chicken. It's up. What, it's up, what cornerbacks talk the most trash? Ramsey, boy. My teammate, every day in Jay, practice. That mother don't shut up, man. I'm like, put your man. mouthpiece in, man. Yeah. Shut up, bro. That's my God too. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. You can bomb this dude deep. He in your ear still talking trash. I'm like, bro, like you just got beat. He like, I don't care about all that. If Ramsey, bro. If Ramsey wasn't on your team, he'd give you a hard day. Mm -mm. No. You don't think Ramsey give no. you a hard day? I don't think so, bro. I don't think so, bro. Why? I, I, cause it's me, man. You feel me? I put myself in a, in a different category because I can do so many things, and the offensive coordinator can move me like in different positions and set me up to be successful against Ramsey. Ramsey's a bigger, taller corner, so he want to get his hands on me. My offensive coordinator, yes, we're going to have times where we go at it mano a mano, but my offensive coordinator, he's going to be smart enough to put me in motion, have Ramsey running, run, running all around in circles like, man, I, I'm not going to chase this dude all pre-snap. You feel me? So it's, it's going to be ways that, like, I can dominate guys like Ramsey, guys like Dion. You feel me? It ain't going to be just straight. Uh, all this saying prom. Stop saying you prom. Saying, saying prom. Prom. It ain't going to be like all this. I'm gonna line up like this sometime. Go out in motion on him. It's, it's all kind of stuff, man. That that the Dolphins do with me, man. It's yeah. Crazy. Now, listen, y'all. The 82 game preseason, which is the regular season, that's over. It's finally time for the real season. That's the playoffs. Don't miss out on any of the NBA playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NBA. From the playing tournament through the finals, from every opening tip to every buzzer beater, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with the same game parlays, live betting, odd boosts, and so much more. And if you're new to this whole sports betting thing, it's super easy to get started. Try betting on something simple as what team is going to win. All you got to do is Go to the app, select your team, place your first bet, and it's that simple. New customers, listen to me, new customers that download the DraftKings Sportsbook app use code GILLY. I'm giving you time to pull out your phones right now, download the app, use code GILLY to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just $5. What are you waiting for?
I'm giving you a chance to pull the phone out right now, put Gilly, so you get $200 bonus bets with only just a $5 bet. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Hurry up. Code Gilly. DraftKings Sportsbook. Right. With the NIL, right? Right. If that was, if that was in your time, you know, um, first of all, how do you feel about the NIL? Oh, I love it, man. I absolutely love the NFL, NIL because obviously it gives the athletes uh, opportunity to earn money for, for themselves, but um, also put them in positions to learn how to take care of their money and l learn the business early. You feel me? Because we got a lot of guys in the league that go broke. As yeah, you know, quick. Man. Yeah, absolutely. You feel me? So them being able to. They said a high percentage of the NFL players go broke. Exactly, man. So them being able to put themselves in position, you know, learn about the business early and. Um, yeah, man, I, I think it's great. I, th I think it's awesome. I think awesome. it's great because I think that everybody wins. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. You, you get players that, that's going to come to the NFL now. They're going to be more developed. They're they not going to be getting their first check when they get to the NFL. So they're going to be used to having a little bit of money. But the downside of it is everybody, everybody isn't going to get the same, you know what I'm saying, thing. Like, yo, you may have a guy driving a Lamborghini to practice every day. Absolutely. You, other guys may see that as, man, like he may think, you know, you know how guys yeah, think, you like, know what I'm saying? Like when Gil was going to college, if he was going to college and he was getting an LL, they'll probably get him like an uh, 85 Chevy, Chevy, you know, Escort, you know what I mean? Like he was, he wouldn't be getting, he'd be getting like the, 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 the corner store endorsement deal. he used mother. Yeah, he'd get like a used car, corner store endorsement deal for some chips and like, he come in there and get whatever he want. You know what I mean? I'm sure you cool with that though. Yeah, he cool with that. He'd do I'd commercials. Cool with that back then. He'd do commercials for the corner convenience store. He went had that type of stuff. Now, do you think sometimes some of these players could get could get lax? Like I already got my bag. Yeah, that's how I be though. Like with, with a lot of guys, man. And I think it comes with you know just the person who you are and just the development um, of how you came up, man. Like I said, my parents raised me to never stop. Um, never give up and always keep going. Never get complacent in your life. I just signed a $30 million deal and I could have just been chilling this whole entire time. But each and every day I'm still out there busting my tail, grinding, still trying to find ways to get better, man, so I can, you know, up my game. Like, I got a standard to hold. I got kids, man. I want my kids to grow up and be like, man, when my dad played the game, this, this dude busted his tail, he didn't stop, and he lived in every moment of it, man. You feel me? And, and I want my kids to be able to grow up into that and, and have that kind of same mindset as me, man. So some guys, some guys do get that. Some guys be like, man, I'm cool with this, man. Like, I'm cool with just this, this $10 million deal I just signed. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to chill with that. But we, we can't get like that, man. You feel me? Because the NFL is not for long. For a reason. Absolutely. Guys don't play for long, man. Well, that money go fast. Two years, right? That money go fast. And that money go fast, man. So you always got to keep yourself in that mindset like that, man. It's hard, you feel me? Because a lot of people are hyping you up, saying, oh, you the greatest. You, you that. You the greatest. You this. You that. But at the same time, though, man, you got you, you to gotta remind yourself, man, like, hey, I still got a family to feed. I still got a lot of people that depend on me to, to do what I got to do. And Ray Lewis told me something at the Pro Bowl. He said, when you walk out that door, Always know that you're not doing it for yourself no more. You're doing it for the little kids that's watching all across the world. Right. You feel me? Right. So if you want to sit up there and ride, ride up on your high horse, know that little kid is watching everything that you do. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's on social media, whether it's on the field, how you move or whatever. Know that you are a big mentor, role model in that kid's life. So that's what I try to live by. Every time I walk out that door, I'm busting my ass, man, because I know it's little kids all across the world who grew up in the same environment I grew up in, you know what I'm saying, with no outlets, with no resources, with no mentors, you know what I'm saying? And they like, hey, if Reek can have that same mindset, so can I, bro. You feel me? Even if they don't make nothing out of themselves, they try, bro. That's the best we can do, bro. You feel me? What's up? They ready for they re they ready for the four. You gotta tell them turned out on the four wheel. I need that four seater so I can flip there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> So let me say this, right? One second. Even when somebody is telling you, though, you the greatest, you the greatest. And I'm not talking about Reek. I'm talking about the young kids in high school. And you always got to put that into perspective that that's only on the basketball court. Right. That's only on the football field. Right. 
financially, we not talk about you the greatest financially, we talk about you the greatest athlete. So when you get the finances, you gotta take that shit and do the right things with it. You know what I mean? You all right? Yeah, no, no, don't react, don't react, don't react, don't react, don't react, don't react. Don't react. Don't react. They tough, they, they tough, don't react. Okay, okay. Don't react. We trying to tell you, Double D, you gotta have some dog in you, man. You would have fell off that four wheeler, you'd have been crying right now. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> So I need you to be careful though. Be you sure. know Take care of your brother, a lot of people, a lot of athletes get it misconstrued. A person tell them they the greatest, you the greatest, you the greatest. We just talk about in the sport that you're doing. You know, sometimes they take that in life. Yeah. Uh so now they wanna be the great, they wanna f they money up, they wanna, bro, we was just talking about the, the sport, bro. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. You, you don't gotta buy a bunch of unnecessary shit to impress us, we love what you do on the field. That's how it is, though, that, that's how it is, though. Like, easily, bro, I, I could've easily drove my McLaren down here easy and showed out in front of the whole entire city. You know what I'm saying? But I still want people to realize that, man, like, I'm still grounded, because I, I, I try to come around people and I try to I try to come around people that's gonna keep me humble and keep me grounded, man, and and show them that, bro. It don't matter how far you make it, man. Like you still gotta keep going. You still gotta keep chasing. You know what I'm saying? Something. You feel me? That's the fun of it. That's why Elon Musk do what he do. He'll be in there already, but right. he's still out here trying to find like new shit to create. You Absolutely. Feel me? So it's it's all about mindset. It is. Man. Now you leave Kansas City, you go to Miami. That's my team. KC? Yeah, that been my team, man. No, whoever wins is his team. Whoever. And win the Super Bowl with his team. He's a loser. He's the biggest bandwagon. bandwagon yeah, that's not called bandwagon. That's calling. So I need you to jump on the Dolphins this year, then, man. Y'all win. I got y'all. Come on. Now if y'all got to win. I have your jersey on. Come on, man. I got, got a you. window, man. Now let me say this, because now it's not about how good Tariq is. It's about legacy from this point on. Right. You in year nine, right? Going into year ten, right? Yeah. Going into yep. year nine. Nah, right? nah. nah. Do you look back like, ah, they got another one. Ah, I got to get me another one. Because when you left, the big thing was, can they do it without Tyreek? Tyreek is the difference maker. You, you see, you see sports center. Yeah, you I see, see, it. All, I see it all, you the see all the shit. And then they went and got it done. Went on two of them up back to back. Yeah, man. Uh, was, you, was you like kind of part of you like, if I would have stayed, my legacy would have been a little bigger right now. Yeah, part of me, but um, the first year that they went, me and my wife, we had took a trip to Tokyo because it was kind of hard for me. You know what I'm saying? I had to like okay. say, I See, I wanna, like the honesty. I don't want to look at no game. Yeah. I, don't wanna I look like at the nothing. honesty. She like, babe, let's just go to Tokyo. Let's get away from it and let's do our thing. So we went to Tokyo for the first year. And when they won, I reached out to all the guys. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm happy for y'all, man. I'm proud of y'all. Yeah. But the second year this year when they won, like I watched the whole game. I'm like, y'all, we got to win this thing. You feel me? I'm cool now. But the first year, it was kind of hard, you know what I'm saying, trying to get over that hump of, you know, seeing the guys, you know, um, do their thing out there because... And uh, let me ask you a question. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Supercuts. There's nothing more satisfying than when you go and you get that nice trim or you, you get your, your, your wig done up real good. Am I right? Especially if smart hair choice. At some salons, you don't know what you're getting. That's not true with uh, Supercuts. They delivered close to 22 million cuts in 2023 with an average of 4.88 rating out of five. Why such high marks? Because they slice you and dice you. They had you looking good when you're leaving up out of there. Supercut Stylist has ongoing training way beyond what you receive in cosmetology school. For the next haircut, use your head. Head over to your local Supercuts. Real smart hair. For real smart hair experience, simply walk into Supercuts. Visit supercuts.com to find us where salon is nearest you. And we in Wallow wasn't there, you know. Wallow tried to give me a, you know, fresh baldy. But I don't know if he knew how to work the clippers. He was qualified to work the clippers like that. But they are over at Supercut. So head over there and get sliced and dice, tie dot, and lead to the side. Supercuts. Right. How much of you, percentage wise, wanted to be there? Six months here. Six months here. I would say none. I'll say none, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy where I am right now. 
No, I'm saying the first year. Yeah, the first year when you when you when, when you, you you in negotiation contract negotiation before you even before the Dolphins is even an option, and you 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 negotiate you trying to get a deal. Oh, I want to be in KC, hundred percent, hundred percent. But before we even knew about KC, or yeah. I mean the Dolphins, or yeah, the Jets or that's what I'm talking team, about. Yeah, I want to be in KC, and that's what I told him that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had talked to Andy and and Pat and everything on the phone. What is it about KC that they just not? It just seemed like they not willing to pay. Over twenty million dollars, like nah, I went, nah. Yeah, they gave me my eighteen. It was like, yeah, Reek. Um, Did they franchise you with the nah, eighteen? They, nah, they 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 didn't franchise me. They gave me like three year for like it was it, it was around eighteen million a year. But I don't know what it is, man. I believe it's, it's just one of those things where like they want to keep the core guys together. Like they they want to be able to keep. The, the team together, but I feel like you got a real good GM, a real good owner, and you guys are winning all these championships. The money's there, bro. The money's there. You know what I'm saying? Like Pat signed a very good deal that's able to take care of a lot of guys. So I feel like they could they could have signed a lot of guys. Now I am happy that they signed Chris Jones. I'm real happy about that. Well, he was like one of the first ones that got over the 20 million threshold, other than Pat, of course. And I don't know what Travis deal. I think Kelsey like at 14, 15. So Travis Kelsey don't even make. Nah. Is he the highest paid tight end? Nah, I think it's the Darren Waller. I think. Don't quote me on that. From the Raiders? But Darren Waller like that, bro. Nah, from the Giants. From the Giants, yeah. He he's good, but he's not Travis Kelsey. No, no, nobody's Travis Kelsey. Right. Nobody's Patrick Mahomes either. Those two they're just different. They just they deserve to be the highest paid. But obviously they're gonna take friendly deals because, you know, keep keep the team together. Did you say would you say that's the best tight end of all time? Oh, for sure. Well, the greatest tight end that I've played with, I will, I will say that. You feel me? Like, I don't want to say nothing else about nobody else's career. What I've seen and how hard he works in practice, he's, he's definitely, like, the greatest, man. He done won two Super Bowls. He done put up 1,000 yards back-to-back -back touchdowns and stuff like this. And he's just one of those guys, like him and Pat, they, those guys just got that relationship where, like, if ain't nothing there, just throw it to Kelsey, he's there on third down, right. first down all day, you feel me? So he's definitely a smart guy, man, you feel me, on the football field. What you want your legacy to be when it's all said and done? All said and done, I want guys to, to like look at my career and say, Reek wasn't just a fast guy. Like He was one of those guys that actually changed the game and brought in like a new wave of receivers. Because a lot of people now, all they're trying to do is just draft smaller and faster receivers. Like guys that aren't trying to draft the 6'3", the 6'4", guy anymore. It's all about trying to add speed because, you know what I'm saying, like, you can't coach speed. And I, and I, see, and I think, I think when it comes to that, I think you, I think it's guys like you and Deshaun Jackson who made the transformation of that. Because at one time, everybody was looking for the Calvin Johnson. Yeah. They was looking for the 6'5", the 6'6", six, six, athletic. Oh, he, his catch radius is unbelievable and all of the – but your catch radius is unbelievable too, because you five yards behind a defensive player. Come on now, <laughs> like if a guy ain't close to me, I'm gonna catch it all day, man. Right, right. So, and at the end of the day, Deshaun Jackson is also the NFL leader. Shout out to him. He's the NFL leader, and I think the most like 20 yard plays, 20 yard catches, or 40 yard catches. Nah, I, I, I think it's 50, because me and him were having a conversation about it. And he was like, nephew. Don't break my record now. Yeah. He was like, hey, slow your little ass down now. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So me and DJ are real close, man. We be having some conversation. You watch you watch college? Yeah, a little bit. The draft next year, who's who's the top five going there? Top five receivers? No, top five players. Top five players? Well, you you, you gotta go Caleb Williams. He a dog. Marvin, Marvin Harrison, a dog. Um I like the receiver from LSU, Malik Neighbors. He's a dog. I really like him a lot. He's a dog. I think him and Marvin are one A, one B. Yeah, yeah, they I like this. They neck and neck they right like there. This. A lot and of people. To, and shout out to Marv because that's shout Philly, baby. Shout out to Marv, baby. though. That's Philly, baby. Shout out to Maserati Marv, man. But I think them two one A, one B. No, no, give me ten. That's all. That's really on all the guys. Nobody from Colorado. You, you forgot Colorado. Who? But he talking about this year. You said I'm this year. About, no, I'm talking about next year. Oh, you said next year. Oh, next year. Oh, oh next year. Those, those two boys going. Those two boys going top five. Travis Hunter and uh, Shadir. And I think Travis Hunter should play receiver. Why? Bring it down. Bro, like his ability to just, you know, catch the ball, run routes, and receivers. Like you get paid a whole lot more money, man. You feel like, like, quarterback. Yeah, obviously defensive back. You know what I'm saying? You can say, oh, I locked the side down, man. But to me, I feel like it's all about. Um, 
positional value. Right. You feel me? If right. And why is that? Why? Why? Okay. Why is the running back so undervalued in today's game? Because they feel like they can just add a guy into a spot that can just take hits and just take handoffs. Because really think about it, running backs, all you got to do is just take the handoff and find the hole. But I feel like a guy like Saquon, a guy like Eric Henry, you just don't shit those guys out. You feel me? Like a guy like Devon A. Chain, Moster, you, you just don't, like, you, you just can't poop those guys out. Those guys are different. Those guys are actually guys who can, can like, catch the ball out of the backfield, block. can, like, block, can and get you third down, third and ones and stuff. Can Three break it, can break it for 50. Not, not a lot of guys can do that, bro. You feel me? I don't understand why they be so undervalued. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why Once either, they man. get to like 28, 29, ah, he's close to 30, let's get him out of ah, here. Time to, re, time to get a fresh one in. Right, right. And it, it's, it's just crazy because you really don't see, you know, people winning championships without a good running back. Yeah, man, Kansas City got a real good running back too. Yeah, well, and he's I'm a like, dog. He run hard. Dog. He can run like old Roger Craig. But <laughs> well, you can hear and see every step he take. That be so hard. A absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I did feel disrespected when they gave him ten, though. I ain't like that. You ain't like it's that. It's only one ten, now. Nah. It's only one it ten. Be, nah. It should be only one ten in your heart, man. Do you set season goals? Like this season, I'm going to try to do this. This. Oh, yeah, last season, I definitely try to uh, crack the 2,000 barrier. What's your goal coming up for this season? 2,000? 2000? 2,000 and also win a Super Bowl, man. Because you would have got 2,000 if you wouldn't got hurt. Man. You you know you – do you look back and be like, damn, that injury cost me an MVP? Yeah, and it was a lot of things that I could have done to have prevented it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be out there trying to free ball whenever I, like, wear cleats. Free balling means I don't wear spat. Um, and not protecting my ankles, like so. It's a well, lot I was of about like, to say because he was he was free balling in jail, but that meant something else. Oh yeah, I, I free ball too under my shorts too. Oh, oh, why you no? No jock, no nothing. Oh yeah, that's you used to be playing football like that, man. Yeah, you supposed to. Why? Be because think about it, like if I'm wearing tights, if I'm wearing like some kind of girdle to like restrict my leg movement and my, you know what I'm saying? Like, I won't be able to move how I want to move, and like I don't like all that tight stuff around my leg. You but what if you take like a helmet to the to the wrong spot, man? You're nah, done. You, you're not. You're not. I ain't man. gonna get there. You, you got to see all that. It's like what you say. It's like, <laughs> like, a, like a bot. You got. Oh, you got to get <laughs> junk and jive all that. Well, man, we down here in Douglas, man. This Pearson. This Pearson right here, baby. This Pearson. I appreciate y'all coming to Pearson. We man. had to. I wanted to catch the alligator though. That would have been some great content. I want, I want, I want. That's life. That ain't no content. Cause you, we could die in the. Process. It's a, that's life. In the process, of that shit. Nah, it's about a good four foot alligator, man. Oh man, I'm thinking. Oh, that was. It's, it's like a little caiman. It ain't no real. I bet it'll come after you, not. But what I'm saying is, she got it in her backyard. Yeah. And she not nervous. No. For what? She, she just don't let the kids go back there and stuff. She just say. So when I went back there, she won't. She really want me to get, uh, get it out. So every time I come, I go over there and try to see if it's over there. And that motherfucker probably be done went because it's like three swamps back there. It's probably in the other swamp. I just want to say, like, that's like the, some of the countryest shit I ever heard. Like, you know, my grandma want me to go get the gate out. <laughs> what? She, they not going to call gator patrol? <laughs> yeah. So what we going to do is uh, we going to get this football, right? I'm going to play quarterback and Gil going to lock you up. You think so? Well, he told me you that. You know they call me Garrell Revis. He told I'm me he going to lock you just telling you. He told I'm me he gonna lock you up. Primetime Gian Sanders. I'm just telling you. In them shoes right now? Man, I'll lock you up in whatever. You a cone, man. You, you know what they say in basketball? Hey, he a cone. What's that mean? Cause when I go by you, get what? You still gonna be there. You a cone, man. <laughs> That's what they say in basketball, right? <laughs> you a cone. Them basketball players, though. Yo, that's the first time. Who I gave you the most it. trouble when that feel? In the league. Who gave you the most trouble? Ramsey. I played against my we played against each other rookies though. Uh, and let's see, motherfucker Pat P. This is my wife right here. How you, how doing, you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Pat P. Pat P. Yeah. Who Pat P? Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson. Yeah. Okay. Patrick Peterson. That was, okay. I another thing. I hate playing to get Pat P. Another boy. thing too. You play offense. Right. But off the field, you the all-time leading tackler. Off the field, you got ten kids. You t he. T <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just, <laughs> oh, you're tapping the brain. <laughs> you, 
You so you just a family man. Yeah, man. I grew up in the South, man. You see, you see what it is, man. You see my boys running around here. You feel me? It don't matter how many kids I have. Like a lot of people won't be able to say Tyreek don't take care of your kids, though. You feel me? I, I think that's the biggest thing. No, I got. I I I had five of them. You know, one of them, one of them passed, but. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dude who I love kids. He'll tell you I'm always Grandpa, with my, my grandkids, Papa. my nephews. You got grandkids? You yeah, got grandkids. Got three of them. It's Papa. Bio. Three of them, yep. And they all boys. But I'm always with them. You know what I mean? So I, I see I see how you is with your kids. How you? I wish all of them would have been here, man. Yeah. Would have had to ride a U-Haul down this month to get them all down here. How, how it make you feel though when they come to the games? They, you like a superhero. Yeah, too. it feel good. Like all my kids love like coming to the games and stuff like that, man. But sometimes it be so hard for me to like mentally, like, mentally lock in because I got daughters too. My daughters, they be like, you know how daughters is. They want to be daddy's girl and they want to be held and stuff like that. So sometimes it's tough, but at the same time though, I got I gotta be, um, I gotta be aware of, you know. I still got a job to do, but at the same time, though, I got to be a father to my kids in this small moment, you know what I'm saying, that I got them here, so. Yeah. It's a lot, man. Yeah, well, shit. You, you, you're doing a good job, man. You know what I mean? You're doing a hell of a job. Hell of a job, man. But we just, we just, we just honored that you, you know, you gave us some time. Kick it, you know, let us come down and see Pearson, you know, ride through Douglas. The rental car spot only had one goddamn car. Hey, come on now. And I probably was the person that drove that in morning car. <laughs> yeah, he had to clean it. He's like, we got to clean this shit. Yeah, he was like, we got to clean it. We like, yo, we had a reservation. What you mean you got to clean it? Oh, we didn't know y'all was coming in yet. Yo, we were supposed to come in an hour ago, dog. What you? Did you want to let your kids play sports? Yeah, like all my boys in sports right now. All my kids athletic too, though. You feel me? So my kids, I got them in karate. I got them in soccer. Martial arts, track. always. You feel me? What do leadership look like in the locker room? What is the definition of true leadership in a locker room? Being able to lead by action and not being able to just tell a guy to do something, but going out on the field and, and leading by action. So if I'm running to every spot and I'm working hard in practice, guys are going to see that and follow. I, I just can't be a guy who don't work hard in practice and just say, hey, you guys got to work hard in practice. I just can't be that guy. You feel me? And being able to hold guys accountable in tough situations. Like if I see, let's say for instance, Waddle, um, or Braxton Berrios slacking on some routes in a game, and I'm like, bro, this is a key moment in the game, bro. Like, pick it up and let's go, bro. You better than that game. They can't hold you. Let's go. You one of the best in the league, so show up, bro. You want to be paid? Let's get it. So being able to hold guys like that and try to remind them, because I was once that young guy. And who who came to you and told you that? Kelsey. J Travis. Yeah. Like, hey, come on, Reek. Like, you the fastest motherfucker in the league. None of these guys should be able to stick with you. You feel me? And as a young player, we sometimes need that. You feel me? So I'm that guy now to, to be able to tell those guys, hey, guys, let's go. I think Travis Kelsey is like at least 30% black. Bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's the, <laughs> he got rhythm. You see him, though? He be, for, <laughs> hey, I be telling my grandparents that all the time. I'm saying, yeah, I think Kelsey, like, he got to be like 25% black. <laughs> he got to be, bro. He got the rhythm. He know he all the out, dances. Yeah. He be out there. <laughs> well, man, we appreciate you, man. Y'all ain't got a ball? What I told you, who I said to kill everybody. Hey, right. he told us before he got what here. He said, "Mine Dukes don't play." They put that work in on you. Going to the Bears. Look. You ain't got to go home and clean up. Cause you gonna clean this shit up before you leave. Okay. Oh, you ain't had no business. I got enough water. You better level that shit right back up. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. Wait, she gotta protect her and her husband. I do. I, no, no, I, I've been with my wife for 26 years. Baby, you gotta start protecting me. Okay. Yeah, me. You, you gotta be strapped up out here and start protecting me. Tell again, cause look, we don't know what's coming out the mix. Right. So he's driving, I gotta be ready. She got, do you I'm hear that, baby? Ready, baby. Okay. You better be ready from That's here it. on out. I'm That's getting you, you're going to go get some, get some guns as soon as I get back. Put them in there, put them in that glove compartment. Right. Bullets and all. I ain't playing. When we travel down that road, oh baby, we safe. Safe, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm making I sure of that. <laughs> Believe that. How you doing? Woo!